your opinion, why is it important to have queer representation on sets and media and um, just all around queer representation when it comes to how what you guys are working on, like I said, sets, media, etc. Just straight up, just to show people that it's okay to be that way and it's okay to exist, that we exist, we're here, we're queer, and we're not going anywhere. Um, and we want that representation to carry out now and just for our future generations, yeah. Right, we want other growing minds and individuals to see that you're different, celebrate it. Because nowadays, most people don't even see labels, don't see skin color, don't see a lot of things that there's a lot of deep-rooted crap into it and that's where it, like it sucks because you have a whole slew of people who think in this generation that it doesn't matter and it's like no it does because if people like us are not here then other people who are just coming into their own they don't feel represented and they won't come forward and they won't be confident to live enough and just be themselves like it sucks when you hear people twice our age looking up to us because we're doing what we're doing because we don't want to be forgotten we want to leave a stamp on the planet we don't make sure that there's something left behind and that queer artistry is going to be alive and well from here to kingdom come because without this queer artistry i think the world's very bland what they say yeah. <laughs> What is your take on for those individuals in our community that they take the approach, like myself, creating their own lane of doing, you know, still queer work and whatnot, but maybe not so mainstream, but doing it because they feel like their stories and mainstream that are not being told about our community that they took upon themselves to then tell and fill in that gap. Uh, I say go for it. Walk that lane, bitch. Like, serve it because you never know who's going to see it. Whether if you just give it to a friend or another friend, if it's done and gets out there, it will definitely inspire other people just to live their best life or see the world through a different lens. And you never know, like I said, you never know who's going to see it. So you might as well right. live your best life and do it. Yeah, I, I supported a friend a while back when I told my coming out story. And that video on YouTube has over a million views and the one person that I wanted to see the story saw it and that changed everything and it was my father so I was really happy that I got to do that for an LGBTQ archive of just stories from the 80s, 90s, 2000s all versions of coming out stories from every walk of life, whether you're cis, whether you're trans, whether you were bi, curious one day, and now you're gay as hell. Like it came, it comes from every every line, and it's like it's such a beautiful thing because people don't believe that it's out there. And it's like no, there's a whole collective of just stories of just people, and this is how years to come. This is how people will remember us because we actually decided to tell our stories because. I want to be remembered. You know, and I'm the only one in my family that's doing this, so why not be remembered for it? A lot of the queer LGBTQ youth, they feel a lot of uh, fear, like when it comes to just showing themselves on camera, on film, TV, or like just being themselves day to day. So I guess we're kind of here to also like show that too, like just try. You know, even if you're afraid, get over it. You know, fake it till you make it. Whatever the deal is, some people we need it to and be here. Multi multi-platinum stars that were just like discovered like damn if the three of us try hard enough and at least two of us are discovered well damn right. we're trying our hardest to make sure get, something is here successful by association like do something <laughs> so I, I know i'm happy with what i do i give back to my community i help out i'm an ally to so many people like if you are ever in dire straits, I've been that person to give a helping hand because being a gay person in a world where it is dominated by everyone else who's not you, it sucks when you're being told, being corrected, you're wrong, you think incorrect, you have impure thoughts, like, hold up. 
I was reading princess and prince stories growing up, Disney this, and yet all these straight relationships are glorified. So it's annoying when we see a gay relationship on TV being shown in all its glory, like on Pose, and people are just like, ugh, I don't wanna see this. It's like, mm. we exist too, shit. It's so annoying. <laughs> What is in store for, you know, Filipina and, you know, her, her crew? Because ultimately, you know, you have a crew mm -hmm. of your, you know, your friends that support you and whatnot. What's next for you guys? Um, Filipina, I would say, she is still healing. She is growing. Um, just, I hope people try to at least help me grow, I would say. That's the most important thing for myself because I always self doubt myself and people don't know that about me. And I would say I can't predict what future comes to me and I don't I don't know what I'm gonna be doing. It just depends on how the life flows and whatever happens, happens, whatever is not, it's not, whatever closed door uh, close door closed. I hope one is open. And yeah, I'm just grateful to have friends like I have right now, especially the crew that I have, the Queen's Brunch, and all the close friends that I have. And also, this great talk. I hope you guys learned something from me that I'm actually not a conniving evil bitch. <laughs> but you just gotta know who is deep down of other people. Do not misjudge other people. Maybe they say it when it's not appropriate, but yeah, you just, just gotta have an open-minded and just understand each other. So, yeah. <laughs> What is up for Marcel now? What's the new things you're working on? So I've had quite a bit of projects I've been working on for a hot minute. I've also had a lot of setbacks. You know, granted everyone has setbacks because of the pandemic, but I've also had time to really grow as an artist and really discover like what are my niches. So in this coming year, um, pretty much I'm gonna be releasing a slew of singles throughout the summer into the fall time. I originally wanted to do an EP or an album, but we're pretty much more in the EP market and the singles market rather than the full length album, which is fine. You know, for me, like I, I can ride that wave. And if I want to do a bigger project, I'd rather have a bigger budget, more time and be more polished. What I was working on two years ago, which I'm trying to get out right now is, you know, my, my come up stuff. But moving forward, you know, I hope for bigger budget shows, uh, bigger budget music videos and songs and better production, better vocal quality because I've been working on my voice. It's come away since a couple years ago. And uh, yeah, just giving you production. It's what you need. If you could work with any mainstream artist on any mainstream television network, what would it be? Well, I've always wanted to work with Mary Castelli because she's an entertainer and I personally like her style of dance and I feel like I would be a great backup dancer and I would love to meet her. I really would. I love my Disney. And there's many others, but if I were to pick one, I think that would be my my moment in history. I'd be super lucky. Hmm. I'm thinking about like where would I where would I see myself on TV? Because people don't see that. But I feel like I fall more into the comedy realm of TV. So I'm like, where does that fall? And the only thing I can think of is Wild and Out. 
I would love to be on Wild and Out. I think that would be fun. Wild and Out? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I think it would be so fun. Either, yeah. No, no, I would be on Wild and Out. I can't think of much else. I mean, they have stuff like even Netflix shows that are. They're like dramedies, like you have a little bit of drama, but you also have those characters that bring the comedy mm. aspect into it. Oh, what's, what's it oh, I do voiceover work. So I see myself in cartoons. That's why I think I was on a hard time with that question. I'm like thinking about like regular. Well, it could be shows. any particular thing. I would do, I would do animation. Like I would, I would, yeah, I would do animation. Comedy, like, um, <laughs> like Big Mouth or like adult cartoon voiceover um shows i would love to be in any of them they do any of those voices i think that'll be fun cartoon cartoon network voiceover stuff like that i would do voiceover i saw myself doing well many different ways because i have a lot of different things that i want to do and i would love to do my own cartoon one day I would love to write books and different things, but in the next five years, I want to be doing mainstream modeling gigs and taking my creative direction and applying it to like music videos or marketing campaigns and different things like that to be used in that type of manner. And I also see myself actually getting into photography and being able to kind of have a hand in all aspects of the creative process and being able to be the photographer for the model and the director. Now, would you see yourself getting your LLC for that or having like opened in like your own type of business? Yes, um, I actually do have a DBA. So, um, it's under the name of Radiant Perfections, and that was originally my podcast. And I stopped doing my podcast a minute ago because I just I was going through a lot, couldn't keep up with it, stopped doing it. But it was the original vision for everything. And pretty imperfections for me is it's kind of like I don't know how to say. It, um, like uh, uh, saying you're ugly but you're pretty. It's like basically embracing yes. all of your imperfections. Yes, finding the flaws. The, yes, finding the beauty in what society would deem the imperfections or the flaws or the things that are wrong with you, and accepting those as a part of who you are. Like some people say that having natural hair is not beautiful it's not something that you know should be embraced but in reality it is and it's my hair and I should find the beauty in it even though it's it gives me an arm workout pretty often you know what I'm saying so for me that's the quote unquote imperfection but there's beauty in it because it's who I am and it's the hair that God gave me and for other people doing the same finding the beauty in their What network would I want to be on? Oh my God. Okay, so here's the thing. If you were to ask me this when I was a teenager and I was doing this, I would have said H, I would have said Nickelodeon and Disney Channel. I was a huge fan of both. I remember back in the, uh, when I'm talking about the Disney Channel, I'm talking about Disney Channel back when you had Lizzie McGuire, you had That's So Raven, The Proud Family, uh, The Replacements, Kim Possible, even Stevens, all the people. That's when I wanted to be on it. But then I also fell in love with Nickelodeon again back when they had Zoe 101, Drake and Josh, um, iCarly, um, you name it, those stuff. Um, those are, that's the time I wanted to be on. Unfortunately, I don't think they're checking for uh, someone of my age, I'm 28, but, and stuff like that, but I feel older. <laughs> um, I don't think they're checking for me right now, but one of my other 
biggest, um, my biggest goals as an actor, one of the networks I really want to be on is HBO. I freaking love HBO. HBO from like the 90s and like even now has always been like to me my, that's like the ultimate goal. Even if I can't do it as an actor, as you know, if they can partner with my business some way or somehow and we can make stuff happen, especially because HBO has a lot of LGBTQ stuff you know, over there now. And so if we can partner and we can really get things going, absolutely. I would love to be on HBO. That's like, that's my, like my top choice right there, HBO. Then it's Nickelodeon or Disney Channel and such. But I say that to say this, if it, when it does happen, because I feel like, I feel like it's going to happen. When it does happen, I have to be my authentic self, 100%. The stuff that I want to show, the stories I want to tell, I want to keep doing that, you know, on a bigger level. But I have to be on my, I have to be my authentic self, and my work has to show my authentic self in it, and that's my thing. And so, so in the next five years, I would like for you know one to be in a bigger metropolitan city. I want to move back to New York City. I think. That I, I know there's a whole lot more opportunities there for creatives. Um, I love the creative scene there. I love the the energy and the vibe and the aesthetic of New York City. It's definitely me. I'm a Brooklyn boy, but um, I would love to finally be working for myself full time doing uh, the photography and videography. I would love for my career, both as you know, the photographer, filmmaker, and um, an actor, I wanna be at that next level. I wanna definitely have a strong team behind me. When it comes to an actor, I wanna have management, and I wanna be able to be able to consistently you know, work. As a business owner, I wanna have a small team you know, working with me. I wanna have, I wanna bring on other, you know, BIPOC, LGBTQ individuals onto my team. Um, I'm all about everybody, each one helping each other. You know, at the end of the day, that's how us small black owned businesses are gonna grow. You know, it's by us helping each other. And so I wanna bring on another photographer, uh, someone who can do um, reception and such. I wanna bring on another editor. I wanna bring on another graphic designer. And, you know, I think that's it. But definitely I want a, a, another a small team of other BIPOC LGBTQ creatives. Um, I think that so we can get so much done doing that. We can really work some, uh, work some magic and such. Um, apart from that, I just, I just want to be able to grow. I want to be in these rooms where, like, things are really happening. I want to be... Um, around the people that are making these things happen in the industry, you know. And I know I'll get there in time and such, but I definitely, that's definitely my goal for the next five years. And so, yeah. And, and, uh, Next five years, where do you see yourselves as far as with your artistry? And like, what are you trying to accomplish? And for me, at least, uh, both, I want to see myself as a recurring member of a TV show. Hopefully, I mean, I don't have to have lines. I would love lines. But um, just seeing myself being wanted like that on a TV show where it's like, we need queer people like that. Like, Post, for me, it was the only really show that kept me recurring. Other shows, it's like, oh, he, they, she looks too good, so we can only use them, like, once or twice, and that's it. And it's like, well, sorry, I don't want to cry both when I'm the pretty one, but, it's like, what am I supposed to do? But um, in the next five years, I want to do that in the, in the media world, but also I'm focusing on um, health and wellness as well, and I want to get my own um, studio and have that up and running.
Nice, nice. Um, I'm taking it day by day. Um, you know, my mission is just to like spread joy and give people uh, their health and fitness through dance. Um, and that's about it. Like, I really can't see that far ahead right now, but I just know that I'm here for a purpose and this is that purpose. <laughs> I want lines. My memory is shot sometimes. Um, <laughs> that's that's why I love TV and film. Like I, I'm sometimes watching stuff and I'm over here quoting lines before it even happens. Like you've been you there. Just, you just love there. talking. Yeah. Yeah. So <laughs> I already know. I think I'd be well off when it comes to that. But I taking things day by day, trying to get you know we're we're, we're still working during a pandemic. Mm -hmm. The pandemic did screw a lot of people over and don't screw my health over so I'm still reclaiming my health um, but yeah I see myself doing a lot more stuff in the next five years I mean hopefully I officiate some marriages by then oh, yes yeah, I have that license if you need anybody who needs marriage <laughs> <laughs> but um yeah cuz we could do it too <laughs>